Why do I care so much about the pipeline? Welcome back to the Mortgage Broker Broadcast with me, Craig Skelton. This week's podcast is a solo podcast, and what I'm talking about is pipeline and why I care so much about the pipeline. First of all, going from an employed role, guaranteed income, guaranteed salary, happens at the end of every month, pay into your bank account, to go from that to instability, insecurity of self-employed with not knowing what income is going to come in, not knowing whether you can pay the bills, not knowing exactly how to budget and things like that can be daunting. When you first, particularly when you're first starting out, it's always something that can be an issue for any self-employed mortgage broker, but particularly when they're starting out, it's always one of those things of, income and budgeting and going from guaranteed salaries yes you get commissioned if you're a mortgage broker in certain roles with certain employers but you've got a base salary that happens every single month that goes into your bank account and you're going to go from that security to the insecurity of self-employed and there are various things that can help with that but one of the things is pipeline and that's what i want to focus on this podcast is really just explain what pipeline is and really why I care so much about it. And there's three reasons why I care so much about the pipeline. One is that it helps me progress my cases. So working through my pipeline, progressing my cases every single week, that's one thing which I'll get into more detail about. Secondly, it gives me a good understanding of the quality of my business, which again, I'll talk more about. And then lastly, it does help with knowing what your income is going to look like and income forecasting and thinking about that side of the business, which is clearly very important because it's all about the income. But we're working on your podcast, podcast, working on your pipeline, knowing your pipeline is and will help with knowing what your income is going to look like, certainly over the next three months. So I wanted to get onto the podcast to talk about that. So first of all, what do I mean by pipeline? Well, to put it very simply, pipeline is all the business that you've written, all the business that's going through, all the bits of your prop fees, your broker fees, your protection, everything put into the mix and those fees that you've written, but you've not been yet paid on. So they sat there, you're progressing the cases, that is your pipeline. And first of all, knowing what your pipeline is and the amount that's in your pipeline is quite a big deal. And I'm always keen to know. I always know, even in my firm where there's sort of 20 advisors, I know as a firm what our pipeline is, which is key for me because then I can understand what the incomes look like over the next three months which I'll come on to. So yeah, first of all, do you know what your income, what your pipeline is? So the total amount of all the business that you've written that you've not been yet, yet been paid on. So that is what your pipeline is. Hopefully that makes sense. So three reasons why, like I said, the first one is always reviewing your pipeline, always reviewing the cases that you've signed up. So these are cases you've not yet been paid on, but you've written, do you have a, it's just giving you a sense check every single week. I always go through, look at the cases and just have a bit of a sense check of where every single case is. Has it been offered yet? Is it with the solicitors? Who's holding it up? But just doing a sense check of, is that case progressing nicely? Have you got it to offer stage where particularly mainly your job's done as a mortgage broker? And if you have, if it's not yet on offer stage, are you, progressing it through in a nice timely manner to make sure you're going to get give you a greater chance of getting paid on it so i know some brokers do it at a set time i know i did it at a set time every single week where it was literally two hours going through my pipeline just make sure i'd progress that case that week or if i hadn't then what what's going on with it and what's the latest on it so the point with it is is that why you're reviewing it is you need to make sure that your pipeline is clean. And hopefully I'm making sense with that. But what I mean by clean pipeline is that it, you've not got cases in your pipeline that you know are not going to complete. You know that you might have got protection in there that's not going to go ahead, that might have declined. Or there might be cases in there that 
the sales fallen through, the purchase has fallen through, and that client's no longer buying or selling or actually going to be purchasing a mortgage with you. So keep it clean. If you've got cases like that, just get them out. You want a true figure pipeline. I know some brokers, especially in the employed world, where they feel they get some comfort in the amount of pipeline that they've got, but actually it's not clean. So why I mean by the employed one, because if you're micromanaged day in, day out, your sales manager will look at your pipeline. And if you've got a decent pipeline, they're more likely to leave you alone. So hence why a lot of brokers who are particularly employed tend to leave the pipelines pretty high. But in a self-employed world, that's pretty criminal. You're shooting yourself in the foot because the other two points I'm going to talk about don't work if you've not got a clean pipeline. So don't hold on to cases that you know are not going anywhere. Get them out. Get the case status updated. Get MPW, so not proceeding with, and just get it out of your pipeline. So you've got a figure in your head that you know is a true figure of all the cases that you're going ahead with and that all the cases are progressing. So that's what I mean by having a clean pipeline. And I say, if you don't do this, then there's no point with point two and point three. So making sure that your pipeline is clean. So secondly, and the second point, by having a, a clean pipeline, you will know the quality of your business as well. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's about... Yes, it's about how much business you're writing. That is key as a mortgage broker. So a written business is mortgage, prop fee, broker fee, protection, all that put together, that's written business. That's, that you've submitted to the lender, submitted to the provider, that is what I would call written business for the sake of jargon. So that's your written, so written business. But what you've also got to look at is you're written to issued, banked, whatever jargon word that you use. We use written business as a business, and most brokers I know talk about written business. The end stuff when it comes out is that can be called banked, issued, cashed in, various other words that are used. We used issued. And so that what that means is that that's basically been paid on and it's out of your pipeline because it's completed and you've been paid on that case. So if you've got a clean pipeline, you will then give you a good indication of what your quality of your pipeline and what quality of your written businesses is. So for example, written to issued, I would say it needs to be roughly 85%. So what that means is you've got a 15% fall off rate or an 85% persistence rate, whatever terminology you want to use. You've got a 15% fall off rate. So National average in terms of written to issued or banked is normally about 67%. So normally you'd expect a third of your business to fall off as a mortgage broker, sales fall through, protection gets declined, whatever the reason is, you can't expect to convert 100% of your written into issued business. So we work on average about 85%. So if you're on 85%, then that means that the quality of your business is good and you're writing quality business. So you're not just getting it written to get it onto the figures. You're not just getting it written to then, like you say, look good from a written business point of view. Because, yeah, that's all right in the employed world. It's really good that you can look great on the employed. But part of my face, I don't give a about the written business as much as I do on the issue because issue business pays the bills. Issue business pays your mortgage. Issue business is your income. So it's okay to have good written but you want to have good issued as well. So written to issued, I would say 85%. So if you're looking at, say, for example, you've got, you write 10 grand, you'd expect eight and a half grand to come turn to issue business. So that's what I expect your quality of business. If you are, your written to issued is a lot less than that. So if you sort of say you're writing 10 grand and only five grand comes out, well, you're written to you're doing a lot of work. You're not working smart there. You, you, there's, you're doing a lot of work for less income because you're writing a lot of business, but it's not coming out. You've got to then, what that helps you do is assess the quality of your business. So is that down to not progressing your cases as much? Is that down to writing protection that really is not cemented with the client and they've not really budgeted in, they've not sort of bought into the, you, what you're presenting and the need for protection and they've not 
bought into that side of things. So you've got to really look as a broker. It will help with the quality of your, your business as well. And you understand the quality of your business. So you should be reviewing your, your pipeline every single week. You should be helping that assess to the quality of your business as well. What is difficult to do is that what sort of timelines do you work on in terms of your written to issued? And what I always sort of say is work on a roll in 12 months. So on a roll in 12 months, I'm going to use simplicity. So on a roll in 12 months, you've written 100 grand's worth of business and you've issued 85. Well, that's fine. You're on an 85% written to issue conversion. If you've written 100 grand and you've only issued 45, then you need to look at your process. You need to be looking at what you're doing in terms of progressing cases and whether you're writing for sure, because that doesn't work. So, but I would assess it on a roll in 12 months. I always look at it from a business point of view on a roll in 12 months, because that will help me get a good understanding of what my written to issue conversion is. So that's point two, written to issue. And the last one, most important one, and the one that I talked about right at the beginning of the podcast, it will help with income. And this is when it really does come into its own. But like I say, if you've not done point one and point two, point three doesn't work. But as a rule of thumb, I always work on a basis that a 30% of your pipeline will issue or bank or cash in that month. So if you've got a 10 grand pipeline, you should be issuing three grand that month. If you've got a 20 grand pipeline, six grand. If you've got a 30 grand pipeline, nine grand. It's not about the actual numbers that I'm talking about here in terms of 10, 20, 30 grand. Whatever's in your pipeline is in your pipeline. But what you've got to look at is you can work with your pipeline to help you understand certainly what your income is going to look like for the next month. So if you're on the first of the month and you've got a 10 grand pipeline, and I'm just using those figures for simplicity, you should be expecting three grand to come out. Third grand pipeline, nine grand to come out. And what you can do is you can help, your pipeline can help you to understand what you want to earn and what you, your achievements are. What do I mean by that? Well, Every book is different. Every book, like I see on social media, you need to be earning six figures as a mortgage broker. You need to do this and this. Uh, it's, that's okay for certain people, but there's a lot of brokers out there that don't necessarily want to earn six figures. They want to have a really quality work-life balance and want to earn 50 grand, or they want to have a work-life balance and earn 30 grand, or they want to have a work-life balance and earn 70 grand. Whatever you want to earn is what you want to earn. So, And you can use your pipeline to help that. So it's just working out the formulas. It's just working out the equations that if you've got, a, say, for example, 30 grand pipeline, you should expect nine grand to be coming out, 9,000 pound of that to come out. Depending on your commission splits, however that works, we'll use 50-50 for simplicity because that's just easier to explain. 30 grand pipeline, nine grand come out means you will earn four and a half grand. That's what you should be. So that will hopefully explain how pipeline works with regards to income as well. Because like I say, it's important from a self-employed and it can be daunting. And it's always about building your pipeline. So going back to my point there, that if you have got a, a 30 grand pipeline, that should, and it's all on a 50, 50% commission split, then you're looking to earn about 55 grand a year, roughly speaking, 90 grand, uh, 30 grand pipeline, Nine grand a month gives you four and a half grand, gives you roughly five, five, 50, 55,000 pounds in terms of income. That's roughly how it works. Depending on your commission split, you can work that out for yourself then. So if you're on a 60, 40, 70, 30, 75, 25, 80, 20, you can work out from there what you want your pipeline to be and what your pipeline should be. And that will help you manage your business, certainly moving forward, certainly over the next three months. If you've got, because you would expect if you're working on a 30% coming out, if you've got a 10 grand pipeline, you should expect three grand to come out, three grand to come out, three grand to come out. So you know over the next three months what that's like. Now, if you increase your pipeline, if you are know that you want to earn money and you want to earn more than that, you can base it on your earnings. So for example, if you want to earn 50 grand and it's all on a 50-50 business split, then your pipeline needs to be about 30 grand. Well, that, that if you've got a 30 grand pipeline, this clean, this progressing, 
you will earn 50 grand a year. It, that's why hopefully I've explained why I care so much about Pipeline because it just helps with everything in terms of future forecasting, helps with what this month's income is going to look like, what next month's look like, this quarter's income is going to look like. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I've not waffled on too much and gone on too much about Pipeline, but I really do care about it. And that's the reason why, because it will help me. If I'm starting the month with a 100 grand Pipeline, I know that I should issue cash in bank 30 grand this month. That's just rule of thumb and just giving you the rough, simple numbers to work from from there. Hopefully that makes sense. Just to recap, three reasons why you should know your pipeline or know what your amount of pipeline is, is that it will help progress your cases, help see your quality of your business that you're doing, and also as well help with your income forecast for this month and for the next three months as well. Hopefully that helps. Takeaway from it is that know what your pipeline is, know what your amount's in your pipeline, and keep it clean. That's the two things. Know what it is and make sure you keep it clean. If you have any questions on this further, then please get in touch. If you've got any topics that you want me to talk about on the podcast, then please get in touch. And if you want to look work, to work working with me any further, then also please get in touch as well. And hopefully you enjoyed this podcast.